Cameroon was once the 12th largest coffee producer in the world, but it is now in 31st place. While exports still dominate, Cameroon is looking to domestic coffee consumption to help boost production. Moki Edwin Kinzeka reports from the annual coffee festival in Yaoundé. Cameroon's coffee drinkers sample locally made Robusta and Arabica coffees at a testing village set up in the capital. Tasting coffee today can make me want to drink more in the future. I think the coffee is very good. The annual coffee event, Tasty Coffee, aims to encourage Cameroon's 24 million people to drink more of the beans to help boost production. The increase in coffee consumption will make Cameroon produce more. We can produce more if we can convince this large domestic market and get set to satisfy them. Cameroon was once one of the world's largest coffee producers, but production dropped from a historic high of 156,000 tons in 1990 to barely 25,000 today. Industry insiders blame a drop in coffee prices by more than half for discouraging coffee farming. We have to look for local solutions to our problems. Local consumption of coffee should be a part of our habits. I do not know why people have the tendency of behaving as if they are afraid of the coffee their country produces. Cameroon, Africa's seventh largest coffee producer, is also looking outside the main export market in Europe to regional ones. Au niveau de la production, donc nous on va on va exporter à peu près 90%. We shall be targeting neighboring markets in Nigeria, Gabon, Congo, and Chad. The markets are promising and can purchase about 90% of our coffee. Nos pays frontaliers, le Nigeria, le Gabon, le Congo, le Chad, voilà tout ça c'est. The Cameroon market, for now, is consuming just 10% of what we produce. Et ensuite, on va revendre à peu près 10% de la production en local ici au Cameroun. Cameroon authorities hope to change that by urging their 300,000 government workers to drink more coffee. The theme of this year's Tasty Coffee: Let's act in favor of Cameroon coffee. Moki Edwin Kinzaka. For VOA News, Yaoundé. Some South Sudanese women are demanding a change in the composition of the country's political system to guarantee better representation for women. The women who had a meeting with officials of the African Union, the United Nations and other international agencies discussed women's role in the implementation of the nation's peace agreement. Take a look. Women and girls have borne the brunt of the six-year-long conflict in South Sudan. Thousands have experienced the threat or reality of abduction, rape, deprivation, displacement and death. These women represent the voice of the Sudanese woman demanding a better future for women folk in the country and they insist it is time for real action from the country's leaders. Nobody is supporting the women of South Sudan and we are just uh, like looking the world what is going on. And always uh, people come to us, what are women of South Sudan saying? What are you doing? What is, what, how are you seeing in this? But we don't have supporters to support us of doing it. Uh, for example, like uh, the uh, determination of the peace agreement, as I said before, will be good for the women of South Sudan to do so with the civil society together because we are the majority and we are the one affected by the war. We have no any interest for war. Our interest is to have peace in the nation. The women representatives and parliamentarians share their views on the peace process with a high-powered delegation from the African Union, the United Nations and Intergovernmental Authority on Development. Their visit follows a decision to delay the formation of a new transitional government by six months in an attempt to resolve outstanding issues, including the unification of armed forces and formation of new states. Women have suffered uh, a lot, and it's good that South Sudan women are very resilient, and they are really moving on to overcome this kind of conflicts. 
they suffer from sexual complex, they suffer from uh, traditional beliefs because the, we believe Africans in general, especially in South Sudan, tradition doesn't allow women to take up some of the uh, professions. They think that it's male, you know, originated and it should be male dominated. Like, for example, in our uh, forces, and um, the, the percentage of women is right, well below 10%. And uh, as to now, women, we are trying our best to see to it that we come up to address the 35% given to us by the revitalized peace agreement. And we really urge that women should get better chance on capacity building to address their problem because it's women who knows what it is. That hurts women. That has to bring women side to side with men. The women also want to see justice for the crimes they have suffered, particularly for perpetrators of sexual violence to be made to face the wrath of the law. A request the delegation says is a priority. During our interaction, specifically with the president, but also with all stakeholders, the issue of empowering women, the issue of inclusivity, the issue of protecting women, the issue of uh, gender-based uh, violence is at the heart of our action and I can, I can assure you that uh, we in the African Union uh, are taking very seriously these issues. The women are also disappointed by the turn of events in South Sudan, especially the six-month delay in the political process, but they remain optimistic that if given the opportunity to take leadership roles they deserve, Lasting peace will become a reality in the country.